Hello everyone, this is John Frells with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to do an analysis on Dominic Team's one hand backhand. I'm really excited about this. Uh, one, just because I can really appreciate his game. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to watch. Two, uh, you know, we shot this video at 240 frames per second. It was back in 2014 in Cincinnati. So just a lot of detail, able to share with you some of the commonalities he has with some of the pros on the tour, and then what truly makes this stroke unique, and it definitely is unique. Uh, a couple of interesting facts about Dominic. In 2011, he actually um, he played in the French Open um, boys final, and uh, he lost to American Bjorn Frantangelo in a in a and a tough three setter, which had to be obviously very disappointing. Now at the pro level, he's won uh, several ATP titles, has not won the major. My question for you is, can he win a major at the pro level? And, uh, you know, he definitely has the tools, the game, the stature. He's 6'1", 180 pounds. And, you know, we've discussed in other videos, guys like Nishikori, you know, maybe that aren't as tall, can he win it, right? So can Dominic win a, a major at the at the pro level? Be interested in your thoughts down below if you can put them in the comment section. Love to hear uh, your thoughts thoughts on that. In, uh, in 2011 as well, so he lost in the French Open boys final. He gets his first ATP tour win against fellow countryman uh, Tomas Muster. So uh, Dominic is from Austria, grew up on the red clay, right? So which explains why he takes these absolutely huge cuts at the ball. Plays Tomas Muster, who's 44 years old at the time, and he beats Tomas in, in straight sets. I think shortly after that, Tomas Muster actually retired. Uh, but that had to have been a fun match to watch. I mean, these guys both have one-hand backhands. Tomas could just grind his opponents back in the day right into the red clay. So that had to be fun, had to have been fun to watch. Good win for Dominic. And then, you know, the rest is history. Uh, Dominic's doing fairly well on the Pro Tour now. But so anyway, interesting fact that maybe you enjoy that. All right. So um, what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, we shot this at 240 frames per second. So I'm just going to run through the video and uh, want to show you what it looks like uh, in slow motion. And um Like I've talked in, in 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 other videos, just about intent, right? So when we receive a ball, we're going to be sending it sending it back. Tennis is a game of receiving and sending. So in this video on the left, uh, Dominic is actually um, his weight's moving forward. You can see that how a back foot comes off the ground and transferred to the front foot. The video on the left, he's actually getting pulled wide. You can see by that step through how he got pulled off the court a little bit. So let me show you the intent here again with the video. Like when he's moving into the court and the video on the left, right? So his weight's going forward. Now notice how far back behind the baseline he is too. So he, he's got huge strokes, so it gives him time to so for them to develop. But see how that weight goes to the front foot? He does flatten this ball out a little more, so it's being a little more aggressive. And I'll show you in the video later how that, why that's the case. The video on the left, he's getting pulled wide, hitting more of a neutral defensive shot. See how he steps through here? So a little more topspin, probably a little more margin over the net, cross court to a big target. So just so you're aware of that. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it back to the contact point. And then we'll just break down the stroke. All right. So one thing I want you to be in mind, let's look at the grip first, right? That's the most important thing here. So let's look at the grip. Dominic is in a strong Eastern backhand grip, which is ideal for topspin and power. The other thing that he does here, and I tell all my students this with the one-hander, is you want to show the strings to the ball. And see that position there? Uh, showing the strings to the ball straight ahead. 
that's a signature position to get into. And then the other thing is notice how he keeps everything in nice and tight. Everything's nice and compact here, right? It's not like these hands are too far away from his body. See how they're in close? Just looks very comfortable, very compact. A signature, signature position to be in when you first make that grip change and you start prepping the racket. The other position here, and I call it the violin position, and I'll show you why I call it this. You'll see it here in the right video, right there. I tell my students as they're turning, you want to kind of tuck that racket in, keep it compact, and almost like you're playing a violin. So notice this position here, how that racket tip is almost tucked in between his chin and shoulder. Once again, keeping things tight, keeping it tight, and just uh, tight and compact. I just can't tell you enough how important this position is. And Dominic gets into it. You can see it here as well. See how he gets that in tucked in nice and tight. By doing this as well, by getting this racket head a little closer to your head, it just gives you a longer swing path, right? To kind of unwind and come through through the ball. All right, so let's look at that full unit turn, right? So he's turned his shoulders. Here's one thing that makes this stroke truly unique. So here's his shoulder, right? Notice how that hand gets above the shoulder. It's rare. You don't see the hand getting that high in a lot of strokes uh, on the tour. And Dominic definitely does get that hand high. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is he's in that straight arm position, correct? See how that arm's straight? Federer has more of like a little, like a bent position. I'll show you a video of Federer here, how his elbow doesn't, uh, it's more of a, a slight bent in it. But by doing this, I compare it to like a rubber band. And Dominic's got a, like a thick rubber band, right? And then when he pulls that rubber band apart, that's all stored energy. And by him doing this, like think about a rubber band, you know, getting, getting that arm nice and straight, getting that stretch. He's storing that energy. And then when he comes through to the ball, he's unleashing that energy. And that's where he gets the power, right? So keep that in mind. But yeah, that hand, good unit turn here. You've seen this in other videos, but just notice how that chin is over his shoulder. Great signature position. The other thing I tell my students here, and you do want to do this, you want to show that shoulder blade to the target or to the ball. Then that you, So there is a little bit of coiling here, right, where you coil, show that, that shoulder to, to the – or I'm sorry, not the shoulder, the shoulder blade to the ball. All right, so let's look at the foundation here. Look at that base. Knees are slightly bent, uh, very balanced. Remember we talk about this, but you want to be able to balance a book on your head when you're receiving that ball. The balance is so crucial. That way your eyes can really fixate on the ball, not that you're bobbling around and hard to pick up the ball and not balanced. So good shoulder here, good shoulder turn. Look at how high that racket head is above his head. I mean, it's substantial. Here's, let's look at the racket drop here. So here's where that racket head starts dropping. I mean, just look at how long that takes to develop. Look at that. I mean, it does. I mean, it's in slow motion, but it does. It takes a long time to develop. There's the racket drop. Look at the arm position here. Arm is nice and straight, nice and straight. Notice too how the racket head here is inside the ball. So he's coming from inside out. In any other sport, it's very similar. Baseball, you want the hands inside the ball. Tennis, same thing. Hands get inside the ball and we come from inside to out. All right, let's look at the contact point. And remember what I was telling you about um, the video on the left, he's flattening the ball out. The video on the right, a little bit more topspin. I'll show you here. Let's watch on the left here. Going to watch the racket head. See how it opens up? Now, part of that could be that he did. Look where he made contact. See how he hits on the upper third, upper third of the strings? See that? Watch the racket head. See how it opens up? 
So it could be partly where he hit, but my thought is the intent here is I want to, he wants to flatten this ball out to get it through the court a little better. Watch. See that? So more offensive, more of a level swing path, flattening the ball out. Now let's look at the video on the right. Remember, he was getting pulled off the court here. Now watch the difference with the racket head. So I'm going to highlight the contact. Watch the racket angle. Okay, so there's contact. Let me change it here a little bit. Watch his racket face. See how it closes? Now, he is hitting with the... He's hitting with the lower third of the strings. Watch. See how that face closes? Now, it could be a miss hit, but I think the intent here is he wants to put more topspin on the ball, which then you usually hit. If you're hitting with topspin, you instinctively hit with the bottom third of the strings, right? And that's where that face will close. More vertical swing path, right? The racket's probably a little more vertical here. And hence the racket face closing. Look at the follow through too. Look at how he's airing out his armpit here and look at how it's not as substantial there. So once again, intent determines the technique, swing path, etc. All right, so look at him, how he just really airs out the swing here. And then this is probably the other thing that truly makes this stroke unique. He just opens this thing up like a new Amazon fulfillment center. Look at that show. Look at the look at the the shoulders, the, the the chest facing forward. You don't see this with other pros. Now Rarinka will do this. Gasquet, Federer, they don't open up uh, like this. So truly unique to his stroke. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if if you like the video, please hit the like button be below. If you really, really like the video, please share it with your friends, coaches, players, uh, parents. I think it's important for them to see what, what the pros are doing at this level. Don't forget to hit that notification bell below so you get the updates on my newest videos. Thanks again for visiting. Have a great day.